ESPN College Football Insider and College Football National Champion Trevor Maddich, who is, by the way, the busiest man on the weekends ever. Seriously. College game day to Landover for the Redskins. Back to ESPN today. Trevor, when do you sleep? February. <laughs> last night last night the Redskins played the night game, eight thirty Eastern. I didn't get done with the post game show until about one in the morning. Jumped in the car for what would have been about a six hour drive back up to Connecticut to ESPN. Took ten hours. So but I did get an hour of sleep in the car in a truck stop, so that was very exciting. Oh my god. Yeah, goodness. at least got an hour. Gee. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the problem is you hit New York traffic and it's like, oh no. Yeah. And amidst all of this, you still have time to take in uh, you know, BYU football as we have you on uh BYU Sports Nation every Monday. BYU, uh it's fourteen nine at halftime with UMass and we're kinda of scratching our heads like, What? Uh, then BYU scores 37 in the second half and uh, wins 51-9. Uh, what stuck out about BYU's performance against the Minutemen? Well, defense and special teams stepped up. I mean, what really was the catalyst for that point explosion in the second half was a blocked punt by the special teams, a couple of fumble recoveries, and a pick six by the defense. And so the offense uh, did get some help to wake up. And so that, those things are good. I mean, they made plays in all three phases, and that's a positive thing. Now, the, the fact that they slept walk through the first half, uh, I don't mind that because then they woke up in a major way in the second half. If, if they'd have stayed sleepwalking through, then, then I would have been wondering what in the world was going on. Trevor Maddich of ESPN with us on BYU Sports Nation. What does BYU need to accomplish in the regular season finale against Utah State, a team that's – understandably down this year? Well, yeah, Utah State, they're down all right, but their defense is not altogether unfortunate. They do have some playmakers on the defensive side of the ball. What BYU needs to really accomplish is have a great time. This is the last home game for the seniors, and it is a, a, an opportunity to whip up on a rival, and that's important. Uh, believe me, it's important. I mean, because ask me, ask me what it's like to lose to your rival. What is it like to lose to your rival, Trevor? I don't know. We were 8-0 against Utah and Utah State when I played, so I have no idea. And you, you, Utah has given BYU fits. So this is, a, this is a final opportunity for the seniors to get a big win over, over a very important rival. And then that's important because I am now a few years removed from playing football at BYU, and I'm still happy about that. By the way, ask me what it's like to lose to your rival. What is it like, Trevor? It's great to whip them and be undefeated against them. It still feels good. I'm still happy about crushing them all eight times that we face them, and it still matters. And so it matters for the seniors to be able to have this one against Utah State. So, really, that, that's the biggest thing. Go out and have fun. Enjoy the last game for the seniors. Have the rest of the team really play all out so that they can send the seniors off of this regular season in the best way possible. We need to ask you more of those emotional questions when you're yeah. on an hour right. of sleep. I wish you'd really bring it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do you um, really feel? Way, I, I respect Utah and Utah State tremendously. I am talking trash in a good-natured way, but the, if they can come up and, and beat us in football, then I'll have to have a little humble pie. But since they never did, tough. <laughs> <laughs> Give us an idea of what the Utah State game was like for you. I, I know you mentioned the results, but the, in the lead-up to that, because now the Utah State game – Traditionally, this has been, okay, this is, this is going to be a fun game in some way, but especially the last five or six years. Now Utah State comes in 3-8. and eight. That was more of kind of the Utah State of your era, right? Well, yeah, Utah State wasn't all that great, but it was always, uh, it was always kind of weird against them. My freshman year, we went up there to Logan, and it was, I, was, I was just barely 18 years old. I mean, I was a baby. And, and it was my introduction into football as a possibly life threatening event because there was an incident that happened on the field uh, that was a bit of extracurricular activity that the uh, Utah State fans took exception to. They began to chant a chant that I didn't think that you could chant. The, uh, the, the ending of that chant was you BYU. <laughs> Right, and so I'm this I'm this young pup freshman, true freshman, just out of high school up there. You know, I was told to keep my helmet on uh, by the by the older guys because they were afraid that things would come flying out of the stands, and and they did. And then and then when this incident happened on the field, 
uh, it was it was like scary. I was like afraid. I thought I thought the stands were going to pour into the field and, and take us all out. So this was my introduction to the rivalry with Utah State, and it stayed with me the entire time. It's a it's a very intense rivalry. Forget the records and keep this in mind that Utah State's lost four in a row. They lost last week to Nevada in the last six seconds of the game. It's been a brutal stretch for them, and they would love nothing more than to erase that with uh, with beating BYU and have the same emotion that I just expressed going forward forever and ever. Amen. This is their bowl game, essentially, because they're not going to qualify for the postseason, and it's over a holiday, the Thanksgiving weekend, and it's against a rival. So what do you expect from Utah State early in this game, Trevor, in terms of emotion and what they bring to BYU late Saturday night? I expect two things. One is good and one is very, very bad. The good is I expect them to to pull out all the stops. They have no chance of beating BYU by playing a straight football game. I expect to see trick plays on offense, aggressive blitzing on defense, uh, attacking the punter, and the in other words, trying to rush the punt and block punts, trying to block field goals, because that's the way that that they have a chance to win this game. BYU just has them outmanned. That's a good thing. That'll be fun to watch because they they won't leave anything untried from their playbook. The bad thing is sometimes you get guys that lack discipline, and they know that they're outmanned. They know that this is their last chance. It's the final game of the regular season, and for them the final game of the season. And you tend to get guys that are undisciplined try cheap shots because they think that proves something. And you got to watch out for that. So I, if, if I'm BYU in this game, if I'm a BYU player in this game, I am, I am playing through the whistle, not just to the whistle, through the whistle, I'm not slowing down. I'm keeping my head on a swivel. I'm being very careful around the pile because if that one or two guys decides to to break discipline, then guys can get hurt. I'm not saying Utah State will do that. I'm saying that if I'm BYU, I would expect that, and I would not let down my guard no matter what the score is. BYU has not had a 100-yard receiver in a game this season, which is pretty crazy. Um, Does that even matter at this point to try and get uh, one the rest of the year or – what do you think about that, Trevor? No, I think it's better if they don't for the whole year, and then they can go into the off season and they can say, look, you receiving core, not a single one of you had a 100-yard game. What's the matter with you? And try to use that as a lever uh, to, get, to get them going. Now, in, in fairness, a lot of that was the new system. A lot of that was the, you know, the, the quarterback learning the new system. And a lot of that was Jamal Williams being so good. And in key, key moments and key games, they were handing the ball off. But the, the receivers – We've talked about this for a couple of years now. The receivers show talent, but I think they think they're playing as hard as they can. But I think as a group, now not every individual, but as a group, I think they can be, they can play with much more anger. In other words, that, that ball belongs to them, and anybody who tries to deny them that ball, they will, they will refuse to lose. They will go and get the ball. They will beast the ball away from anybody who tries to deny them a reception. And that's a whole lot different from running your route and catching the ball if it gets to you, right? And so that kind of attitude they've been trying to teach. Ben Cahoon, fantastic coach. He understands this stuff. But it takes a while to get that culture ingrained. And so I think that if there are no 100-yard receivers over the entire season, it makes it easier to use that as a club and beat them over the head until they're semi-conscious so that you can, you can drive it into them. ESPN College Football Insider and National Champion Trevor Maddich with us on BYU Sports Nation. In your opinion, Trevor, which side has been better for BYU this season, the offense or defense? Oh, the defense. You know, the offense has done a lot of great things, but they've been up and down. And, and I give a lot of credit to the offensive line of the running game because from a defensive standpoint, an opposing defensive standpoint, BYU has been largely one-dimensional in a lot of these games. It has been the defense and the special teams of BYU and then the running game that have really allowed them to get to this point where they've won seven games against the most difficult schedule in their history. And so the, the, that's, that's nothing against the offense. But it's also easier for a defense to learn new tricks and a new scheme because an offense is based on building. It's hard to build. It takes time to learn how to work together. And if one guy on offense makes a mistake, the play can be stopped. On defense, you're not building, you're destroying. 
And while everybody does need to be in the right place, you've got guys swarming to the ball that can help to make up for a mistake somewhere most of the time. So in, in fairness to the offense, it's harder for them to, to get a new system implemented. Even so, I love the way the defense played. They played angry. They, as a matter of fact, Fred Warner, uh, he went after the football in pass coverage at times exactly like I want to see the, the uh, BYU receivers do. So really, if, 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 I'm, uh, in that, if I'm a coach in the BYU receivers meeting room, I'm putting on tape of Fred Warner defending passes and saying, this is how I want you to catch passes. Let's go national now. Uh, the college football playoff race is heating up. Do you think that we will see a two-loss team in the playoff? It's very possible, uh, very possible, because there, there's all kinds of chaos that has occurred. I mean, keep this in mind, though, a week ago, numbers two, three, and four all lost. And so all of a sudden, you've only got one undefeated team that's in contention for the playoff, and that's Alabama. The only other undefeated team in the AP top 25 right now is Western Michigan, and they're not in, in, uh, in range. So, you know, the, the Big 12 had been written off after Oklahoma lost two of their first three games in September. Nobody was talking about the Big 12 making the playoff. Well, they've got a path to it now. Colorado is a team that didn't have to be written off because it was never written in. And all of a sudden, they're ranked number nine in the nation, and they have a path to compete for that fourth playoff spot. So Colorado has two losses. Oklahoma has two losses. Oklahoma State theoretically has two losses, but one of them should never have happened because yeah. there was, an, un, there was a, an extra play that occurred after the game should have ended that they, won, that they lost a game on to Central Michigan. But these are all two lost teams that are in range. Wisconsin is a team that if they win the Big Ten, they're number five right now. If they win the Big Ten, Wisconsin is in the playoff. So, yes, this could be the first year that you see two lost teams make this playoff. Trevor, one last question, just one final one. What is it like to lose to your rivals? I have no idea. I'm so glad you asked that question. We were 8-0 against Utah and Utah State in the four years that I played, and I can tell you this, that it matters. It <laughs> matters. And you know what? Every time I see someone from Utah, Utah State, I am always respectful. I respect their programs. But deep inside I know we beat you. <laughs> Fantastic stuff, Trevor. Uh, enjoy your hibernation in February. Until then, uh, we wish you the best. Okay, go Cougs. All right.